Good evening, everyone. Indeed, what a day that will be when Jesus Christ we will all see and much even more face to face. The very thing I would really love to do when Jesus would come is to embrace him tight. Is to embrace him tight. Now, let me ask you for this evening, why are you still here? It's, the, it's a wonderful question to ask. Angel has set the tone this a while ago. Why are we still here? Is it because of our career? Is it because of any dreams that we have? Tonight, we are going to study one of the biblical truths. Why are we still here? And it's very important to re realize there must be something that should already take place that Jesus would come, but he was not still able to. Not because he's dependent upon people, but he still wanted all people to find repentance and not perish so that all of us will be with him. But tonight, we are going to study something that is very, very important that needs to take place. What we are going to talk about tonight, you, we really need to take heed upon this because this really needs to take place. It must have happened on 1888, but it's because of something it did not happen. And it's preparing us right now for that certain part of the history it needs to happen so that Jesus come, so that Jesus will take us home. What should that very thing be? And that is the very thing that we are going to talk about tonight. The title of our message in the first part of our series, Why Are We Still Here?, is The Sleep Talk. Who among you here are talking while sleeping? I heard a while ago that one of my friends, when her roommates are looking at her while sleeping, they were able to hear words. What they were able to hear is this. The girl is promoting PYC. <laughs> Even to her dreams, no? She's having sleep talk. But could sleep talk be possible spiritually in us? That we are speaking of something, yet we are the ones who are sleeping. That is very important to talk about tonight. And as we set those things, let us bow our heads first for the prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us tonight. Heavenly Father, tonight, as we are about to review the end time events, I pray, dear Lord, that you may guide my lips. Help me to speak clearly. Especially, dear God, the deep things that we are going to talk about tonight. May you speak it plainly for each one of us. May it really be clear. May you not let the enemy hinder each word, but let it all penetrate each ears and heart. And nonetheless, help us to experience a preparation for your soon return. May these insights that we are going to talk about prepare us deeper for your soon coming. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The earth's history is coming to its close sin. We all do know that signs of the times are already happening. You can find rumors of wars. You can find earthquakes, famines, pestilences, what everything that is talked about in the Matthew, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, we can all see the signs of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ except for one. And that is what? In verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world and then shall the end come. There are so many places that we're not able to reach yet by the message of the Advent. And it needs to be proclaimed. And every one of us 
has a part of it. And if we are sleeping, who else is going to talk about it? If we are the one talking about it, yet we are sleeping, who else? Who will believe us if we are doing so? Who is going to talk about these things in this world that is coming to its close end? Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, the beauty of the world, we may see it in the glory of the sun, right? But as the sun is setting, you can find that the glory of the earth is also fading out. The glory, the beauty of the earth, you could, not, you could no longer see it. The beauty of the flowers, the beauty of the trees, the beauty of the ocean. When the sun is already setting, darkness is already taking place. All of its beauty is fading. And the same way with the earth, it is coming to its close sin. The earth's glory is little by little fading because we are now coming to the night where Jesus is indeed soon coming. And I'm so excited because one of the parables has mentioned the urgency of that soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like to invite you in the parable of the ten virgins found in Matthew 25. We are just going to set the tone tonight, but we are going to go deeper, and I hope that you will bear with me with all the verses that we are going to talk about. I need to talk about this because this really needs to take place. And... If we will be able to take the tone or we will be able to take the point here, you will see that this thing that we are going to talk about tonight really needs to happen so that Jesus will come. So that Jesus will come. Let us see in Matthew 25, verses 1 and 2. Let us just go in verses 1 and 2. And it says here, Then shall the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto what? Ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to, make the, to meet the bridegroom. What is going to happen at this time? Wedding, feast, wedding feast. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Have you noticed that at, on the onset of, this, of these verses, they were already described as wise and foolish? What have they done already that they were, what, described as wise and foolish? But before we go on that, we are going to talk about that even deeper tomorrow night. And we are going to elaborate things, what of the things that we needed in these last days. But tonight, I would like to focus first upon the meeting of the bridegroom. It is going to take place, and that is the wedding festivity. I would like you to notice, when does wedding feast happen during the old times? When? Are you familiar? No. Let us talk about it. It's, it's found in Christ's object lesson. It says here, in many parts of the what? Of the East, wedding festivities are held when? In the evening, that's why you will notice in the further verses of Matthew 25 that it is a little while midnight happened, right? Because wedding festivities are held in the evening. But it's also mentioned here, the bridegroom goes forth to meet his bride and bring her to his home. By torching the bridal party, proceed from her father's house to his own, where a feast is provided for the invited guests. This is talking about the evening. This is taking place in the evening. What is going to happen in the evening? As I have talked a while ago, that earth's history is going to fade. It needs to end so that Jesus will come. It really needs to happen so that Jesus will come. What are those things? all of the signs of the times that we could find in Matthew 24. But I would like you to see that some of the, some of the people here on this earth 
are telling the nearness of our Lord, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I was so surprised that some of them are not even Bible-based people. What I'm trying to say is that they are, what, agnostics. They're not either Christian. And somehow, agnostics are talking about these things. I would like you to notice one of this person. But before we go on that, the nearness of our Lord Jesus Christ was mentioned prior to these people when they have talked about it. And we can find that in Matthew 24, 33. In Matthew 24, 33, it says here, the nearness of our, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that what? It is near, even at the doors. When you are at the doors, is it close or too close? It is very, very near. It's just a knock away from you. It's just a knock away from you. And Jesus also mentioned that He is coming quickly. Amen? Isn't that a good news that Jesus is trying to give us the urgency of His coming? And you will find that in Revelation 22. Revelation 22, and here it is mentioned how many times? Christ first mentioned it in verse 7. It says here, Behold, I what? I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. When Jesus Christ is trying to say something once, it is important, right? But when Jesus repeats it, it must be very important. Because it was also mentioned in verse what? Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. But it is, if it is mentioned three times, Jesus must be telling that there is an urgency that I am coming quickly. I love him and more how he mentioned it in verse 20. Surely I come quickly. Amen? Surely I come quickly. It is very certain. It is very sure that Jesus will really come. But I would like you to notice these people who really have mentioned the nearness of our Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know Stephen Hawking? Stephen Hawking was known as to be the successor of Einstein. But unfortunately, this man is living in a what? Debilitated body. And you will find what are the words that he mentioned. Agnostics are talking about this thing. You will see what he mentioned here. It says here, Our long term of survival and any hope for our species is in what? Question. However, if we can keep from destroying each other for the next 100 years, sufficient technology will develop to distribute humanity to what? Various planets. When do you like, like to go? When that happened? Some of you might go to Venus. Some of you might go to Mars. When would you prefer to go? Pluto? <laughs> I don't know. But what he's trying to say here is that in the nearness of Christ's return, things are really going to be what? Devastating. And it will come to its destruction. It really needs to happen so that Jesus will come. Amen? And Eugene Linden also mentioned things about this. And he had talked about nine compelling reasons why this world can't last. And that is found in the, the book. He wrote the future in plain sight. Because Jesus indeed is coming is coming. But, I would like to ask the question. It was mentioned that Jesus is coming, but why are we still here? Why are we still here? Some people say, Jesus is coming. 
Are you ready? But now, it has changed. Jesus is ready. Are we coming? That's the question there. And with regards to that question, we really need to ponder why are we still here? Why Jesus has not come yet? God really wants all people to come into repentance so that all of us should not perish but have everlasting life. But I would like you to notice this. Don't you know that in 1888, especially in 1844, they have, they have studied the Bible thinking that Jesus would come on their time, 1844. But years later, they studied deeper why Jesus did not come yet, it's because they have, what, interpreted the Bible wrong. The event is right, but, or the timing is right, but the event is wrong. And they, they went to study even more. But don't you know, it went even further that in 1888, there is something in the general conference session that happened, and there are true pastors, two true pastors who spearheaded the meeting that time. And they are talking about something. And Ellen White has mentioned deep things about this, that Jesus really needs to come. Jesus is about to come, is supposed to come, but there is a problem. There is something that needs to take place, and that is no other than the Sunday law. The Sunday law. Are you familiar with that? Don't you know that before the state and the church is trying to build together or to come together to what? To proclaim, to enforce the Sunday law, it should happen that time. But unfortunately, the people are not yet ready. And the world is not yet ready. Why? Because the church is not yet ready to proclaim it. The church is not yet ready to receive what God will out outpour in the end times. And that is what we call the latter rain. It is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I would like to mention that later, the emphasis of that thing. That is supposed to happen. But he mentioned that the church is not yet ready. And she was able to find out that there are still things that need to happen in the end times. And this is what we call the end time scenario that needs to take place so that Jesus will come. And there are seven of those. Before we go on that, I need you to turn your Bibles with me in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, in the book of Revelation, here it mentioned here, it, is, it was mentioned in the last verse of chapter 12, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the what? Commandments of God. How many commandments? Nine commandments. Really? No, it's the Ten Commandments of God and have that what? Testimony of Jesus Christ. But I would like you to notice something here. I need to set up a foundation here so that you will understand why, why are we still here? There is one thing that needs to happen. And that is no other than, of course, there is no other than the Sunday law, but of course, Preceding to that, there are still end-time events that need to happen. But one of the main things that needs to happen so that indeed persecution will come to its fullness is the Sunday law. Now, would you like to study with me? Have you brought your Bibles with you? Okay, are you ready? Okay, let us see here. Don't you know that in Revelation 12, we can, five, we can find here five stages, five stages of the historical stages of the church, more particularly in this chapter. And it will be amplified in chapter 13. You would notice something so amazing here. 
Are you ready to study the Word of God? Let us study the Word of God. You would notice here that in verse 1 and 2, it's talking about who? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in what? With the sun and the moon under her feet, and up upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Now let me ask you, who is this woman? Yes, this is the church, but what time period of earth's history, of the church history, does this woman really represent? It says here that the child did not come yet. It is ready to be delivered. In other words, this woman is no other than the Old Testament church. And the dragon is what? Enraged with the child. We can find the reference in the, book, in the story of Moses. Are you following so far? The first child in the time of Moses, they are trying to what? Kill it because they know that the Messiah would come. The Messiah would come in Israel. So that's why they are trying to kill the child. That is the woman, the Old Testament church. But next one, let us see another thing here in verses 3 to 5. It mentioned, and there appeared another what? Wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the what? Third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born now are you trying to figure out something here from the old testament time and then it says in verse 5 and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nation with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto god who is the dragon here It is no other than the old serpent. It is no other than Satan. But who really represents dragon at this time? Would you like to know who? Would you like to know? But before we go on that one, you would find here that there's a woman and her seed, right? There's a dragon, but it was not mentioned that the dragon has his seed. But who would be the seed of the dragon? Are you ready to know here? Okay, let us see. Let us, let's make this quick, okay? Let us make this quick. And you can find that in Matthew 2, 16. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, this bear with me, this is deep, but we need to explain this plainly so that you will find what do this lip talk really talks about? Now, I would like you to notice in Matthew 2, verse 16, it says here, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding what? Wrought and sent forth and slew all the children that were where? In Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Now, who is, who is the dragon here? Of course, we know the old serpent. But don't you know that the representation of Herod as, at this time is no other than the pagan Rome? Oh. What are those things that he's talking about? Pagan Rome. I would like you to notice this. In the great controversy, it says here, the line of prophecy in which these symbols are found begins with Revelation 12. With the dragon that sought to destroy Christ at his birth, the dragon is said to be Satan in Revelation 12 verse 9. He, it was that moved upon Herod to put the Savior to death, but the chief agent of Satan 
in making war upon Christ and his people during the first centuries of the Christian era is no other than the Roman Empire in which paganism was prevailing religion. Thus, while the dragon primarily represents Satan, it is in a secondary sense a symbol of pagan Rome. It is paganism. It is pagan Rome. What is trying to talk about? Let us see. I would like you to mark those things, huh? Mark those things with you, and we are going to talk about that even deeper after we have set the foundation. What does the woman represent? Old Testament church. What does the dragon represent? Okay, no. Satan working through pagan Rome. Now, what is the third stage of the earth's history at this time or the church history at this time? I would like you to notice in Revelation 12, 6 and then 13 to 15. Okay, you will find that with you in your ample time. But I would like you to notice here that the dragon here rule how many years? 1,260 years. And you would notice that this dragon is still persecuting the woman. Are you following so far? Now, I would like you to notice here. This is now the 1,260 1, years in prophecy. But the, third, the fourth element here that I would like you to notice is this. It's found in Revelation 12, verse 16, in which it mentions what? And I would like you to notice that in 1,260 years, what happened? It is what we call the dark ages in which all the Christians are being what? Persecuted. Are you following so far? Can I hear a loud amen if you are following so far? Okay, thank, thank God. Now, I would like you to notice this. But after the persecution, something happened in verse 16 of Revelation 12. You would notice that it says here, And the earth helped the woman. Who could the earth be? Mm -hmm. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the what? Flood. Now, the waters represent here no other than the people, congregations. Okay? Swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, what does this mean? I would like you to notice this. In Europe, in 1,260 years, persecution is happening. Many Christians are what? Are killed. Many Christians are being put to death. And many Christians are being what? Of course, persecution happened that time. And that's what we call the Dark Ages. I would like you to notice that that happened in Europe. But after that, in verse 16, it, ha it says that they were what? They what? They were swallowed where? In the earth. What does earth represent here? What? It is no other than the United States of America. But I would like you to notice here. I would like to explain it as simple as it could be, huh? So that you could follow with me. But that time, no United States of America yet. But they just dwelt there. They just dwelt there so that, I would like you to see this, so that the people of God might seem to find a refuge in the place. So persecution ceased that time. Now, now the fourth, the fourth element, persecution ceased. But I would like you to notice also, would the devil be happy that persecution will cease? No. He has something in mind. But you would notice that persecution, what? Continued. And you will find that in verse 17. That's why it was now enraged with what? Who? The woman and went to make war with the who? Remnant of the seed of the who? 
The woman, this is, not, no, this is now talking about the what? The remnant which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, don't you know that Revelation 12 is amplified in Revelation 13? Now, how, just please bear with me. I really need to explain this. I really need to explain this so that you would understand that in this time period, you would notice that the pagan Rome would little by little, what? Embrace with the United States of America. Are you ready? I would like you to notice this. Revelation 12, 17 is being amplified in Revelation 13. Now, I would like you to notice that. In Revelation 13, it says here, especially in verse 11, you would also notice, before we go on Revelation 13, verse 11, in the previous verses from 2 to 3, or from 2 onwards, you will find that what? The beast, what? Receive a what? Deadly wound. And it represents then that that is the time period that the persecution ceases. Are you seeing a connection now? Are you seeing a connection now? Now, Brother Ovel, please make it simple. Please make it simple. I am trying, okay? I really need to make this simple so that you would understand the end time scenario that needs to take place before Jesus would come. Now, you would notice here that it received a deadly wound and it, the persecution ceased. Verse 11, it says, And behold, another beast coming out where? Of the earth. And he had what? Two horns like a lamb. And he what? Speak as a dragon. Now, what does it mean by speaking as a dragon? Satan working through, through what? What? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Again, huh? again, huh? The dragon represents who? Satan, and also it represents the what? Pagan Rome. Now I would like you to notice this. Yes, you, you are right in that what? It, it is in the church, but basically it is trying to point here that it speaks like a what? Dragon. Therefore, it is another beast that represents the first beast, which is the dragon. Are you following? Now, it is now talking about the first beast. And this is work, this second beast is working through pagan Rome. Are you following so far? Are you now getting the picture here? Now, who is this beast? Working through pagan Rome, and that is not other than the United States of America. Because the beast here does all to please the first beast. You would find that in Revelation 12, it was amplified in Revelation 13, that the second beast, all is doing that he can to please the who? The first beast. In other words, the one who gave him authority, the one who gave him power, is no other than the dragon or the first beast. And he's doing all these things not only through himself, but through the power of the dragon. Now, what does that mean? Now, you would notice in verse 12, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the what? The earth and them which dwell therein to what? Worship the what? First beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, are you following so far the scenario here? The second beast is now trying to set the pace so that all the people is will be what? Worshipping the, the dragon, the first beast. And there is no other than the United States of America working through pagan Rome. Now, you will find that little by little in this end time scenario. In this end time scenario that needs to happen so that Jesus will come. Because we are looking for this something. We are waiting for this something. But actually, it is waiting for us. And there is no other than the Sunday law. And some people are texting, you know what? Please text now the other Adventists. That... <laughs> 
Have you received those texts? That the Sunday law is being what? What? Being signed out. Actually, we already have received all those things. Be careful, my dear brothers and sisters. Be careful, my friends. We need to go back in the Word of God. We need to what? Take away those sensationalism. Because you would notice here that this end time scenario needs to happen so that Sunday law will come and then Jesus will come. Now, are you ready? We have set the foundation. Are we still clear on that one? Who is the, the woman? The church. Who is the dragon? Satan working through? Pagan Rome. Now, what is the, what is the time period? And then that is when the church is being what? Persecuted. But after that, the persecution what? Cease. We, they went where? United States of America. Is there any United States of America then? Not yet. But then, okay, nagkaroon na ng United States of America. But I would like you to notice here that the woman was being persecuted again. And here, you will find all the connections of what we have said. Now, can I go on for the end time scenario? Now, one by one, let, let, there are seven, but I will make it this quick for you to understand the end time scenario that needs to happen. First one, there will be union of the church and state in the United States of America. And you will find that in the deeper study in Revelation 13, you will find that the earth, the beast from the earth, represents the United States of America. And you will find how this really would collaborate in the end time scenario. Now, I would like you to notice this quotation from the what? The great controversy. Now, I would like you to notice this. As the Sabbath has become the what? Special point of controversy throughout what? Christendom because they are the ones who what? Keep the commandments of God and have the what? Testimony of Jesus Christ and they're being persecuted. Now, I would like you to notice this. It says here, and religious and what? Secular authorities have what? Combined to enforce the observance of what? The Sunday, the persistent refusal of a small minority to yield to the popular demand will make them objects of universal execration. It's not about the Sunday keepers, but it's talking about the supernatural power that will enforce Sunday keeping. Are you following me so far? That's when the church and the state will unite in the United States. Now, I'd like you to notice also the second one. Don't you know that when this happened, leaders don't have any idea why are this happening? Now, I would like you to notice this. Leaders don't know where this idea is coming from. And you will find that Revelation 12 or 13 is really taking place not of any ordinary people, but it's what? Being sketched indeed in the earth's history, in the plan of God, in the prophecy, it needs to happen so that it would outline Christ's soon return nearer and nearer for us. Now, I would like you to notice this. It says here in Review and Herald, January 1, 1889. There is a what? Satanic force propelling the Sunday movement. But it is what? Concealed. Even the men who are what? Who are engaged in the work are, it, are what? Themselves blinded to the results which will follow their what? Movement. And no wonder that this is not talking about any people, but it's talking about the what? The great controversy, the, ba the battle between God and Satan. And Satan is working behind the scene so the people will be destroyed. And their, their people could not what? be prepared in, come, in, prepare, in meeting Jesus Christ. Satan is trying to do all he can so that we could not meet Jesus Christ. Are you following so far here? Number three, you will notice also that what? In Revelation 13, 12, you will find that Protestants will stretch their hands to take the hands of the 
papacy. You would notice here in Revelation 13 verse 12 that he exercised, okay, all the power of the what? First beast. The first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwelleth therein to what? Worship. To worship. Now I would like you to notice this. It says here, in this quotation, Maranatha 179, Protestants will throw their what? Whole influence and strength on the side of the? Do they know these things? Where this idea coming from? No. They don't have, they have any idea, but it is through the working of the what? The satanic forces by a national act of what? Enforcing the false Sabbath, they will give life and vigor to the corrupt faith of what? Rome, reviving her what? Tyranny and oppression of conscience. Then it will be the time for God to work in what? Mighty power for the vindication of His truth. Are you now seeing the point here? That it really needs to happen so that the vindication of God's truth will be manifested. And you will see indeed what is truth and what is error. You will see what is good and what is evil, what is right and what is wrong. In that end time, it will really need to happen so that we could see the closeness. This is the sign. Jesus is indeed coming. Jesus is indeed coming. Number four. Now, I would like you to notice also that in number four, they will also what? Come, unite in common points of doctrine. Are you now seeing all those things that we have said a while ago? Are you seeing now the parallels there? They will what? Unite in common points of doctrine. Now, I would like you to notice the great controversy 563, paragraph 1, and it says here, there's an what? Increasing indifference concerning the doctrines that separate the Reformed churches from the papal hierarchy what is what she's trying to talk about here is the what the movement the movement in her time which is trying to what to proclaim the truth the opinion is gaining ground that after all we do not differ so widely upon vital points as has been supposed and that a, a little what Concession on our part will bring us into a better understanding with Rome. Wow. I told you this might be heavy, but this needs to be explained so that we could see indeed the end time scenario and Jesus will come. Jesus will come. Number five. This now, another thing that really needs to take place. And Jesus will come. The clergy will be foremost in convincing their church members to act upon what? Congress. For Congress to give the National Sunday Law. Amen? Oh, it's so hard to say amen now when we're talking about Sunday Law. <laughs> that, also, that only tells that we are what? Not yet prepared. That is why in 1888, Sunday law is supposed to come, but it didn't because the church and the world is not yet prepared. And don't you know that it's now trying to what? Sketch what is also going to happen in the end time? That's why we really need to be prepared. We really need to be prepared. These things are what? Signs that indeed Jesus is coming. It really needs to take place so that Jesus will come. I would like you to notice also the quotation here. From the Great Controversy, page 592, it says here, The what? Dignitaries of what? Church and state will unite to what? Bribe, persuade, or compel all cast classes to what? Honor the Sunday. I will explain to you later on, on Tuesday the meaning of those things. The lack of divine authority will be supplied by oppressive enactments. Political corruption is destroying what? Love of justice and regard for truth. And even in free America, rulers and legislator, legislators order what? In order to secure public favor, will yield to the what? 
popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. Are you now seeing that the, they are now having something in common here? And they're now embracing, embracing things here? Liberty of conscience, which has caused so great a sacrifice, will no longer be respected. And in this time, don't you know that six, when Sunday law will come, this thing also will happen. Are you ready for this? Number six, God's people are going to be blamed for the upheavals of the society. Why? Because we are going against the law of the land. Are you now seeing the picture here? Are we seeing all these things happening in our time? It only tells indeed that Jesus is what? Closer and closer even at the doors. Even at the doors. Now, you will find that in Matthew 24 verse 9 that what? We will be put into court. We will be put into what? In front of this authori authoritative people to what? To defend our faith. Yet, we will be the one who will what? We will be the one that will be blamed by the things that are happening in their time. I would like you to notice this. This is a powerful statement which what supplied the truth about this. I would like you to notice. It says here in Great Controversy, page 592, those who honor the what? Bible Sabbath will be what? Denounced as enemies of what? Law and order as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing we are the one who are what? Causing anarchy and corruption and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. We are the one who will be blamed. Why are those things are happening? But they don't recognize that it really needs to come because the earth is really what? Crying that Jesus needs to come because earth is what? Fading in its history. It needs to be renewed. It needs Jesus come. It needs Jesus Christ to come. Amen? And one more thing it says here, their conscious scruples will be pronounced obstinacy, stubbornness, and contempt of authority. And last it says here, they will be accused of disaffection toward the government. Who? Ministers who deny the obligation of the divine law will present from the pulpit the duty of yielding obedience to the civil authorities as ordained of God. In legislative halls and courts of justice, commandment keepers will be what? Misrepresented and Condemn. A false coloring will be given to their words in which we really do not know, but it's about who? The first beast. Who is the what? The dragon who's working all these things. Are you now seeing all those things in the Bible? Are you now seeing all these things? But the worst here, the worst construction will be put upon their motives. That's why the persecution will continue. The persecution will continue. What are we going to do now? And one more thing that it needs to happen in the end time scenario is this. Constitution of the United States will be changed and also be amended. You will find that in Testimonies Volume 5, 711, Paragraph 3, a great crisis awaits the what? People of God, a crisis awaits the world. The most momentous struggle of all the ages is just before us. Will we despair? Will, be, will we be discouraged, my dear friends? No, let us not be discouraged, but rather let us take confidence and take courage because it only tells that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Events which for more than what? 40 years we have upon the authority of the prophetic world declared to be impending are now taking place before our eyes. Already the question of, of what? Of an amendment to the constitution restricting liberty of conscience has been urged upon the legislators of the nation. The question of enforcing Sunday observance has become one of national interest and importance, and there it really goes, national 
Sunday law. But should we despair? My friends, you might be observing what is trying to talk about here, but it's not about you. But it's about the battle between God and Satan. Between the church, between the, the seeds, and even the remnant. It is a supernatural battle that even us could not even what? Could not comprehend. It would always be mind-boggling, but... There is something that is for sure. We could trust the one who have sketched the what? The prophecy. Amen? And that is no other than God. And He's the one who will what? Take good care of us. And here we can find the hope. We can bear the hope here. It says here, the what? The Lord in His what? Great mercy sent a most precious message to His people through what? Elder Wagoner and Jones. When that happened? 1888. Can you just imagine? That is just 1888, and what's the time now? 2015. <laughs> and it's even, even closer at the doors. It says here, this message was to bring more prominently before the world, the what? The uplifted Savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the world. It presented justification through faith in the surety. It invited the people to what? Receive the righteousness of Christ, which is what? made manifest in obedience to all the what? Commandments of God. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. It is the third angel's message, which is to what? To be proclaimed with a what? Loud voice and attended with the outpouring of His Spirit in a large measure. Amen? That's why it, re it did not happen yet because the church is not ready yet. We are looking for the Sunday law, but the Sunday law is waiting for us. The problem is this. We are trying to proclaim that we are Adventists, but in our action, in our departments, we are not. We are asking the people for the persecution. We are asking for the time of persecution, but how could they persecute us if they could not see yet in us what we believe? Am I communicating something here? That is a challenge for us. That's why this end time scenario needs to happen. But this is a good thing. The mercy of God will be there for us. He will carry us through no matter what. Because in the end time, it will not be about you. It will not be about me. But it will be about our God. It will be about our God who will deliver His people in the end time. It will be His might. It will be His power. It will be His authority. He will be the one who will win the victory because He already won the victory for us. Amen? And if you are with God, who can be against you? We are on the side of the winner. Amen? Amen. Whew, praise be to God. He won the battle for us. And one more quotation I would like to read for you is this. Last two quotation, I should say. The time of test is just upon us for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ. The sin-pardoning Redeemer, this is the beginning of the light of the angel whose glory shall fill the whole earth. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like you to take heed with you what the last quotation will say. Are you ready for this? Shall we despair? that the Sunday law will happen? We thank God that the Sunday law will happen. And we need to ask the Sunday law to happen so that Jesus will come. Amen? Amen. And how could that happen? By our lives. <laughs> By our lives saying that we are the ones indeed who are keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. It will not be about you, but it will be about God. It will be about Jesus Christ. In other words, I would try to point here is this. Let us have Jesus Christ live in us so that those things that we are proclaiming, the truth that we'll be proclaiming, will be manifested in us and through us. And you know what the hope? I would like you to read with me this thing. As the third angel message, the third message swells to a loud cry. And as great power 
and glory attend the what? Closing work. Who will attend the closing work? It's the glory of God. It's the power of God. The faithful people will what? The faithful people of God will partake of that glory. It is no other than the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which we call the latter rain, which revives and strengthens them to pass through the time of trouble. God will be our strength. God will be our refuge. He will be our victory in the end time. My dear brothers and sisters, plainly, then the immutable word of God teaches the second coming of Jesus Christ. This great event will yet take place. Nothing can prevent its occurrence. Unbelief will not hinder it. Opposition will not prevent it. Fear will not keep it from coming. It is predicted in the infallible word of God. And this is a promise in John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also what? In me, in my Father's house are many mentioned. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go to what? Prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am. There ye may be also. And tomorrow night, after we have discussed what needs to happen, what should be the very thing that we need to prepare us or to strengthen us, to protect us in the end time. That will be our subject tomorrow. May you not miss it, as you would not dare to miss it also when it happened in our time. God bless us all.